Hello. Um, we're looking at the front face of the headstock of the new to me Wotan D75M boring mill that I uh, recently purchased. Uh, the last video I posted showed us building the foundation for this boring mill. That's got to be four or five months ago already. Um, since then, I haven't posted anything since then, but since then the boring mill showed up in early June and I've been working my way through it, uh, cleaning it up and getting it ready to use. Uh, currently it's in a bit of a state of disassembly. Um, I focused mostly on the headstock so far. And you can see sort of an overall view of it. Um, you can see in the foreground on that scissor lift cart is the boring spindle outboard support which bolts onto the back end of the headstock. I have that off. And down on the ground is the cap that goes up on the column. That all had to come off so that I could get the headstock off to work on it. Um, I don't have a lot of video actually of the what I've done so far. I did take a lot of pictures during disassembly so I'll post some of those at the end so you can see what the machine was like when I got it. Um, I came up to my shop on Father's Day, the Sunday, and my plan was to change the oil in the headstock. And I uh, came up to do that and I ended up working non-stop on the headstock for three weeks. Um, the inside was very dirty. Um, I pulled the drain plug to drain the oil and it was as black as black coffee and there was water in it and what looked like aluminum swarf coming out and so I drained all that out, put the plug in and I have some kerosene here that's not dyed, it's just clear as water. And I put about a gallon or so in and ran it and I was watching it go by the telltale site and it was just as black as a black coffee again. So I drained that, I put more clean kerosene in, ran it, same thing. I did it about three times and it didn't seem to be getting any better. And I thought, well, I gotta, I gotta open headstock up and see what's going on. So I started and it's like renovating an old house. You just keep getting deeper and deeper into it. And I don't have a good uh, service manual or anything for this. So it's pictures and memory or all I have to remember how it goes back together. So. I didn't want to stop until I had finished and got it back together. So I worked non-stop for three weeks just on the headstock. And uh, you know, there's still more to go. I want to re still want to strip down the outboard support and clean it and put it back together. Um, the motor's pretty dirty. I want to clean it up and probably repack the bearings. Um, uh, and then after that, there's the whole table and saddle assembly which has gears and clutches in it, and I'm assuming it's gonna be just as dirty as a headstock. So that's all gonna to have to be gone through. So there's still lots of work ahead. And then once all that's done, I need to put a set of readouts on it. I'll do that myself, and that'll take a while. As well. Regarding the headstock and how dirty it was inside, uh, I, th I think I know the reason. Um, the guy I bought it from, uh, I, I don't think he actually used it that much, and he owned it for about 10 or 12 years. Uh, but the guy that he bought it from was down in the in the US and That guy claimed that he'd only ever used this for gun drilling uh, Aluminum plastic injection molds, which is pretty easy work. So um, And I would believe what he said you can see here that he's got notes written on it for gun drilling um, <clears throat> When I opened this up the headstock I found aluminum swarf inside and I couldn't figure out how it got in there. Um, but anyways, I, I believe I found the, the way it got in. And I've never done any gun drilling before, but from what I understand, you have the gun drill, it's long and skinny, and you force high pressure coolant down the middle of it. And the chips and coolant come rocketing out the back. And you usually have some type of a gland or something to catch that and direct the coolant back to the tank. I suspect these guys were doing some of that work without a gland. I think what was happening is the part would be 
up here, the coolant would be coming back. And I think it was just hitting the headstock. Now, these caps here, if anybody's familiar with gearboxes, you know what those are. That's where they bore the hole through the gearbox to put the shafts in. And then after they install the shafts, they press these caps in to seal the gearbox up. And then they put a threaded hole in the middle so you can put a slide hammer in and get them out. Then what they do is they put a set screw in to plug those holes so nothing gets in. When I got this machine, the set screws were missing on these two holes. And they probably had been since the guy who was gun drilling with it owned it. And when I took this cap off in particular, behind the cap is the bearing, but between the cap and the bearing, it was absolutely packed full of aluminum swarf. And you know, it can pass through the bearing quite easily. They're, they're open bearings. There's no seals or shields on them. So it can pass through there and get into the gearbox itself. And that's what I think happened. And likely a lot of coolant got in too, and who knows what else. And it just, you know, the oil was, it was really dirty and there was a lot of sludge in the bottom. Um, but surprisingly for a, this is probably, this machine's probably approaching 50 years old. Um, the amount of wear was not bad. Like most of the gears looked like they're in pretty good shape in spite of the fact that they had this crap in there circulating around. It didn't really look any more worn out than what you'd expect for a machine that was 50 years old. So I think it should be pretty good. When I get it back together and it's got oil and I know everything's being oiled, I think it'll, it'll run pretty good. So. But anyways, I don't have a lot of, uh, like I said earlier, I don't have a lot of video, uh, but I will post some pictures of as I was tearing it down to show just how dirty it was. Um, down, I also took out down here where this open cavity is, there's a, a feed transmission and a shaft comes down from the headstock and goes in there. And then that feed transmission has a series of uh, electric clutches in it and they send power either uh, out to the table assembly to drive it, uh, and they also drive the lead screw that raises and lowers the head. So there's um, three places where shafts enter the gearbox and there's oil seals, and I believe all the seals were shot, and especially the ones on the top with swore from coolant coming back and landing on it. Uh, again, this gearbox was just packed full of stuff um, I'll show you the show you the gearbox here. Um, this actually would sit in this orientation if you were looking at the machine like we just were. Uh, this is the feed input shaft. It comes from the head. Uh, there's some bevel gears and a series of sort of counter shafts, and there's four clutches and those control feed direction. And then here, this is the output shaft that drives the lead screw that raises and lowers the, um, the head. And the seals are completely shot in both shafts. So this gearbox was absolutely packed full of sludge. And these surfaces you can see here, I'd take a, a putty knife and scrape about half an inch of just black uh, sludge off to get it this clean, it's still pretty dirty. But uh, once I get the rest of the head back together and I don't have so many parts on my bench, I'm gonna take this transmission apart and clean it out and, and uh, replace the seals and that. So that'll be the next project after the head. And then after that, there's the whole table and saddle assembly. This is a rotary table. Um, it turns freely, but I'm going to take it off because I imagine it's all full of crap too. You can clean the bearings out and make sure they're getting oil. Uh, but that's one of the more important things you do when you take an old machine tool apart is making sure all the oil lines are clear so that everything that's supposed to get oil is getting oil. And I confirmed that in the headstock. I confirmed that every oil line was getting oil and the oil was clean. So I'm happy with that. But I expect I'll have the same problems in uh, 